but I just want to cover right at the front um, all of the new features that are in uh, EPDM and going forward I'll call it uh, SolidWorks PDM Professional. Um, if you have questions during the webinar, feel free to go ahead and send those to me via the webinar interface and I'll get to those questions at the end. Um, another change in 2016 is that if you've ever done an installation of a client or server components on or an upgrade of EPDM or SolidWorks PDM Professional now, um, if you've ever done an upgrade or installation, you'll know that the installation package is different than the SolidWorks installation package. So basically all of the SolidWorks software uh, comes through the SolidWorks installation manager, except for EPDM. Well, in 2016, that's changed, and EPDM and now called SolidWorks PDM Professional as well as SolidWorks PDM Standard, both of those PDM products now come through the SolidWorks installation manager. So the installation and upgrade process will happen through that installation manager as opposed to the uh, separate download that you're maybe used to working with uh, in regards to PDM products. Um, another one, this, this one is probably my favorite of all of the new changes in 2016 uh, for PDM products from SOLIDWORKS. Uh, the revision number synchronization is a really powerful tool for any customers uh, that are trying to import legacy data and you want to make sure that the revisions are mapping to the correct database revision. If you've ever taken a uh, PDM admin class, uh, typically with uh, me we, we cover this scenario of mismatching revisions from legacy data uh, when you're pushing files through a workflow. This makes updating those revisions so much easier. Um, so as you're moving files, legacy files into PDM, this is going to making sure that uh, with the correct revision into the new uh, workflow that you've defined in PDM. And we'll show an example of that a little bit later. Um, and then another big key addition to the PDM uh, world is PDF custom property integration. What this means is that there's that have um, custom properties, metadata associated with your PDF files, previous EPDM could not interface or interact or update or read in uh, custom property values from PDF documents. That's no longer the case with a new PDF plugin for uh, PDM Professional and Standard, which allows PDF custom properties to come into the data card, which is super nice if you're trying to track custom properties or interact with PDF custom properties. That's addition as well. Um, and here's one that uh, will probably be really helpful to users that are collaborating a lot and working with different departments, working with different users, uh, everyone's collaborating on the same assembly or pro reference handling for moved files or renamed files. What this is talking about is if you're creating or if you're making a change to an assembly or you have an assembly open, it's got a cache that it's working with. You've downloaded the latest versions to your local cache, your local hard drive, um, and you're working on those and Maybe you're working on your assembly and then someone comes in and they rename a file that you're working on or they move a file to one of those files, the reference files that you are working on. Uh, previously, you would just continue to use the cached version, but in 2016, um, you'll get a warning now that will tell you that those files have been moved, uh, letting you know that you need to reopen and, and rebuild those references um, so that you're not working with uh, a inc an incorrect uh, file, 
file that's moved to the wrong location. So that's really helpful in giving you some visibility to uh, what's going on with those references as they get moved or renamed um, while you're working on them uh, in SolidWorks. Super nice. Um, and then being able to rename a file in SolidWorks. Uh, this is a feature that's been added to SolidWorks just in general and also applies to Enterprise PDM or now SolidWorks PDM Professional. Um, this allows you to go into SolidWorks, go into the feature manager tree, um, and rename the file. Like if you're working on an assembly and you wanted to rename one of the components, you previously you'd have to close down, rename it in Explorer or in EPDM in the Windows Explorer view. Uh, now you can actually rename that file within SolidWorks, which is pretty convenient. Um, and then for those of you that are familiar with the changes that have happened with Windows Server uh, 2012 and 2012 R2, uh, Microsoft removed the indexing feature as a default um, component or uh, feature with that software and added it as a uh, separate for purchase feature. So a lot of users were previously using the indexing service um, for indexing their file vaults. And with that feature going away, uh, SolidWorks has now provided an option to uh, just regular um, in as their so Windows uh, file search is going to be an additional option if indexing is not available to you. We'll take a look at that as well. Um, and then a few little minor things. Uh, you can now sort columns in tables. So if you ever wanted to go into your Contains tab or your Where Used tab or File dialog and you wanted to sort the columns that you see, either by revision or configuration or whatever you have defined, you can now sort those in uh, the PDM interface, which is pretty nice. Um, and then there's some requests to be able to resize the thumbnail previews, either make them smaller so they don't take up as much screen or make them bigger so you can kind of see what the, the preview is showing you. So you can now resize the thumbnail images uh, in Build Materials, Contains tab, uh, to take a look at the files that are in there. Um, and then kind of sneaking in at the end here, we have the PDF uh, generator. This is really um, a nice, nice feature. It's, it's one that I'm super excited about. It's not in uh, 2016 SP0. It's still in development, um, and it'll probably be released in SP2 or SP3, depending on uh, what the development process looks like, but I'm super excited about it. What it does is it actually will take, um, just like you have a task in EPDM right now that is able to generate a PDF file of SOLIDWORKS drawings, an IGES file or STEP file of SOLIDWORKS parts. Um, the PDF generator, uh, is able to do the same thing with Office documents. So you can take Office, Word, Excel, PowerPoint, <clears throat> and generate PDFs automatically the same way that you can, on a trigger, generate PDFs of uh, SolidWorks drawings. And if you wanted to generate PDFs from DWG or DXF files, you can have the draft site added automatically generate PDFs uh, of those DWG or DXF files, which is really, really cool to be able to generate those PDFs for even more documents, Office documents, DWG files, DXF files. So that's a super exciting new feature that they should have um, hopefully available uh, within the SP2 or 3 download of SOLIDWORKS 2016. Um, so. Uh, that is an overview of some of the new changes to SolidWorks uh, PDM Professional now, um, no longer EPDM. And I just want to take a, take a moment to 
kind of demonstrate some of these new changes in the actual software, as I'm sure you're anxious to take a look at those. Um, first off, I want to talk about standard. We'll talk about the differences between standard and professional, and then I'm going to jump into the standard interface, kind of show what that looks and feels like, and then kind of jump back in to talk about the other features and jump back and forth between presentation and demonstration. So um, main differences between SolidWorks PDM standard and professional is SolidWorks uh, PDM professional has additional capabilities over standard. Um, no features of EPDM are going away with professional. They're staying the same. Um, so you're not losing any functionality if you're on EPDM. The only thing that's changing is the name. But standard has uh, less capabilities than pro. So those usually fall in three categories under either automation, replication, or customization. So I want to talk about the differences between those and then actually show you the interface. So differences between pro and standard in regards to automation are um, automatic SOLIDWORKS data import features. Essentially what that's talking about is when you import legacy data into SOLIDWORKS PDM Pro, you can use automatic transitions to automatically sort documents based on uh, file name, properties, variables, um, custom properties, that kind of thing. In SOLIDWORKS PDM standard, you can't. So any kind of sorting mechanisms or importing, um, that would be uh, a manual process rather than a, an automatic process. So that kind of falls under automation. Um, automatic document creation, PDF files, that files like I was just mentioning that you can create in EPDM Now and SOLIDWORKS PDM Professional, uh, that's not available in SOLIDWORKS PDM Standard. Um, that is exclusive to SOLIDWORKS PDM Pro. That includes the uh, Office to PDF that's coming out soon uh, for SOLIDWORKS PDM Professional and the DWG and DXF to PDF. Those automatic tasks are uh, included with SOLIDWORKS PDM Professional. Um, and then we have a suite of hawkware applications that can automate some of your PDM tasks. Uh, those are available in EPDM right now, and with PDM standard, there's no access to the API application programming interface custom code for PDM. So PDM standard uh, will not be able to use the hardware applications that we've developed for EPDM, uh, but SolidWorks PDM Professional will be able to use that. Um, and then as far as replication, uh, Any time that you're working with many different sites, such as um, remote uh, sites or different business units, different engineering departments that are in different locations, maybe you got an office in Boston, an office in Portland, having those multiple sites and being able to communicate your design changes across those sites, that's a feature that is in SOLIDWORKS PDM Professional uh, called, called replication, being able to copy those files across um, so that everyone's looking at the same data. Um, and then <clears throat> SOLIDWORKS PDM Standard uh, can have five plus users, but once you get above five, you might start to see some performance degradation because SOLIDWORKS PDM standard is actually based on C Microsoft SQL Server Express. And Express has some inherent physical limitations in terms of it can only uh, use a gig of RAM. Uh, the database size has a maximum of 10 gigs. That's not the amount of files you're storing, but it is the size of the metadata, workflow states, um, history, uh, file documentation, that kind of thing. <coughs> So there are some inherent limitations, and you might start to experience those uh, once you get above five. Um, and, and then uh, for the web server, um, SolidWorks PDM Professional offers a web client for users to access documents inside the vault 
even on um, mobile device, on a Mac, on uh, remote laptops that are not connected to the network. So any kind of replication where you need documents to be accessible outside of the network or um, you need many users to be collaborating on the same project that's probably pro territory. Um, and then finally, customization. Uh, in SOLIDWORKS PDM Professional or EPDM, you can have as many workflows as you want, as many workflow states as you want. In SOLIDWORKS PDM Standard, you can have uh, one workflow and 10 workflow states. Uh, so kind of a simplified process and simplified uh, interface there for SOLIDWORKS PDM Standard. Um, and like we mentioned before, API access is unavailable for SOLIDWORKS PDM standard, so adding and writing custom code for standard is, is not going to be available, whereas it is for PDM Pro. Um, and then any kind of integration with other systems like ERP, PLM systems, automatically generating an XML file, uh, those will be um, exclusive to PDM Pro, kind of that automation um, as well. And Solid, SolidWorks has um, really good bill of materials capability in SolidWorks PDM Pro, but there are some additional features that Hawkridge has identified as um, a good place for customers to be able to more fully utilize a, a better um, software for uh, controlling bill of materials. And so We've collaborated with another company um, called ATR Soft to create XBOM. And XBOM enhances the capabilities of SolidWorks PDM Professional, um, allowing you to consolidate your bill of materials, whether that's electrical and mechanical or many different bill of materials sources, and put them all in one location, version and revision control that within SolidWorks PDM Professional. Because that uses API, it's not available in standard, but it is available in Pro. So those are some kind of high-level differences between uh, standard and professional automation, replication, and customization are the, the general three things that I talk about as far as differences between those. Um, <clears throat> and we'll go ahead and take a look at the software itself um, and demonstrate that. So. Uh, let's go ahead and jump in. What you'll notice with standard is that it looks and feels just like uh, professional. So the interface, the architecture and the interface are both built on the same uh, architecture and system. So Go to my standard vault. Logging into an EPDM view is the same thing as logging into PDM standard. So we see the same uh, Windows Explorer interface that we're used to. Uh, we get the preview tabs and um, data card tabs. All of this browsing is uh, available just like it is in professional. Difference here between the uh, preview windows is that PDM Professional will come with eDrawings Professional, whereas um, PDM Standards preview with eDrawings is just eDrawings Standard. Um, <clears throat> and the data card, same thing here, customizable data cards that can tie into the custom properties of your documents, SolidWorks documents in particular. Um, Version control is available as well, being able to track your uh, documents in PDM standard and control who's working on which file at what point in time. Permissions are all there via the workflows and folders as well. Uh, bill of materials tab, same as PDM professional. Um, contains tab, uh, where used tab all of those features that you're used to looking at in um, the times you've maybe seen an EPDM demo. That's the same here, same Windows Explorer interface. And then inside SolidWorks, um, it's going to be 
the same as well with a SolidWorks PDM add-in. And like I mentioned before, kind of covered some of the differences between um, PDM Standard and PDM Professional. And I'm going to go ahead and get a prompt to check out the document. And we'll see that, that the same PDM tab that we saw or that we see with uh, PDM Professional is available in standard. So you can check in and check out directly from the SolidWorks interface, edit the data card, um, get visibility into who's working on uh, documents at the same time, <clears throat> all within the SolidWorks interface. So pretty cool functionality, <clears throat> pretty much the same. So moving from standard to professional is going to be very easy. Um, for any of you that have worked with workgroup in the past, you know that moving from workgroup to EPDM or PDM professional uh, is a challenging uh, undertaking, whereas with uh, moving from PDM standard to professional um, is a lot easier. Uh, we definitely have resources available for moving from workgroup to standard or workgroup to um, PDM professional. And we, <clears throat> we've done quite a few of those, but it can uh, be complex. So that's why Hawkridge is involved in those typically. Um, whereas starting out with standard and then upgrading to PDM professional, you don't have to move any files, you don't have to um, map any documents, uh, you just have to update your serial number and update SQL and that's pretty much it. So that's PDM standard interface, pretty much the same as PDM Pro, so the look and feel is uh, pretty much the same just with some additional features available in Pro. And I want to take a look at, not this one, let's take a look at this one. So um, that was PDM standard. And one of the other changes that have happened with 2016 is that now SolidWorks PDM is included in the installation manager. So when you're installing or upgrading your clients or server components, um, those are going to be done through the installation manager. So this is kind of what that new interface is going to look like. So being listed out with uh, the other SolidWorks products that are listed there. And then for the server components, and that includes the SolidWorks PDM client as well, um, that is controlled through server products. So SolidWorks PDM server is where you would access those features, database server, archive server, um, upgrading those will take place through the uh, installation manager. So um, what we've covered so far, we talked about the name change, EPDM is becoming SolidWorks PDM professional. There's SolidWorks PDM standard that has been um, released. Uh, installation changes, we're now working with the installation manager. Um, and I want to talk about revision number sync. So let's go ahead and, and talk a little bit about what that is and what it does. Um, I'm going to go to a professional vault that I have here. So what revision number sync does is it updates revisions in SolidWorks PDM to match the data cart. So if I copy and paste an assembly or some of its component parts, and it has an existing revision, so in this case I copied over these assemblies and components uh, right before this presentation, and if I were to push this file through from under editing to release, what would happen is it would not go from revision E to revision F, it would go to revision A. And the reason why is because I've simply copied and pasted the file over into 
uh, SolidWorks PDM. However, I have not updated the database to correspond to, to have a corresponding value with that revision. So what feature they added um, to SolidWorks PDM in 2016 You'd have to create an import workflow where you update the revisions based on the value uh, using triggers like if the revision is E, send it through this workflow that will update the database value for that file to E, um, and you do that for 26 letters or however many revisions you have. In PDM 2016, they've really given that a facelift and, and updated the interface to help that process for getting legacy files um, into PDM at the right revision. They've really given us a really powerful tool for that. So I want to take a look at how this kind of works under the hood. What happens is you've got a workflow, and in this workflow state under editing, um, I've got a revision number set up, alpha revision scheme, so A, B, C, uh, and I specified in this workflow state, it has to be in the workflow state that I'm working in, specified a revision number that I'm going to update and how many increments there will be. So A, B, C, I'm not skipping anything. So increment by one. And then I choose which revision value I'm updating. So generally, my revisions are called revision. You might call it something else, but in this case, mine's called revision. And I'm going to be able to update that automatically uh, using some of the features in 2016. So previously, there was a feature in EPDM called increment revision under modify. And what this would do is it would increment the uh, database revision to match. So what I could do with this particular file, in that case, in previous versions, uh, with revision E, was I could go to increment revision and I could update the revision in the database from A to B to C to D all the way up to E. But that would require me doing that every single time manually and there wasn't a way to kind of do that for all the files. Um, what's really nice in 2016 is they changed that function to call it set revision, and when I select that, I get this dialog box that, number one, reads in the value that's in the data card, so it knows that the data card value is E, and I can select which revision I want it to go to in EPDM. So it lets me know, hey, the revision is E. Currently, it was sitting at A, but I want to update it to E. And what I can also do is um, select another file and update that to E if I wanted to, and also update the variable. So in this case, what I'm doing is I'm taking this revision. I want it to go to revision E, and I want the data card to be updated to E as well. And that will perform all of those actions all at once. I can also, in this dialog, set revision on all files and um, update the card var variables and um, automatically set all of the new revision valuable revision values to the card variable. So if I have a lot of different um, assemblies with various uh, revisions, clicking on set all new revision values. will allow me to update all of those together. So it goes through and finds all of the discrepancies and is able to update those documents to the proper revision so that when I confirm, let's go ahead and update these variables. It will go through and update those documents for me. And then instead of going from E to A when I approve the document, it 
it will go to F. So as you're bringing in previous versions of files, previous revisions into a new PDM environment, uh, you can update those very easily using that set revision. I'm super excited about that. That helps you get up and running with PDM a lot faster and a lot more efficiently. Um, I really like that <clears throat> new design. So let's go back here. Um, <clears throat> and then we have the PDF custom property integration. So previously, if I had a document, like a PDF file, for instance, open that up. What I will see under File and Properties is there are some custom properties. So title, author, subject, keywords, some custom properties that might exist, project number, name, and date. Uh, before in EPDM 2015 and previous, you were not able to edit these either um, using the, the data card or bring those doc those properties in uh, to the data card from the PDF. Now in 2016, you can actually change custom properties on the data card and have that push into the custom properties of the PDF document. So that when I copy and paste this uh, PDF document into my professional vault, check it in. We'll see that it, it grabs that title and puts it into my document because I've defined a relationship to look for the custom property called title for PDF documents. So super helpful for those of you that are using PDFs pretty heavily. Um, and then reference handling for moved or renamed files. Um, kind of want to talk about this. So what happens is when you're working on an assembly in SOLIDWORKS, you might see a dialog that looks something like this, and then all of a sudden someone moved one of the files that you're working on or that's a reference to your assembly, uh, or they renamed it. What you're going to see now in 2016 is this dialog box that says, hey, this file has been moved or renamed. Um, here's the affected file, and then uh, it requires the reference file folder locations to be updated. Um, so basically asking you to close and reopen the document so that you're working with the new, the newly named file and the newly moved file um, so that it can handle those references correctly. So it gives you this uh, little dialog box as well as this little warning down here at the bottom that you see uh, in your PDM add-in for SOLIDWORKS. Uh, rename a file inside SOLIDWORKS. So what this is talking about, let's close that because I've already got it open. Is that if you have the permissions to rename a file, you're going to be able to rename it within the feature manager design tree on the right hand side. So you can go in and right click on a file, maybe a, an assembly or a part, and there should be a rename function. Interesting. Check real quick. It 
should be fairly straightforward to rename that. Well, I uh, can't seem to find it right off the bat, so I know it's in there. <laughs> uh, it's definitely available in PDM Professional. So um, I'll have to kind of look around and see if I can find where that rename function is. But should be there. Um, and then Windows Search and Content Search. Um, what this is talking about is in the admin tool, you can set up content search for your PDM vaults, and that's under indexing. And you can choose to index, and previously you only had a, an option to utilize the indexing service that's default with uh, Windows Server. Um, but now, because that indexing service has been taken away from the default settings from by Microsoft, uh, you can also utilize the Windows Search uh, capability for performing your indexing. Um, so that that was a key issue for users that were using that indexing service and no longer had access to it once uh, they upgraded their servers. Now you have access to that via the Windows search in ePDM or SolidWorks PDM Professional. And <clears throat> um, sorting and resizing. So let's take a look at what that does. If we go to an existing assembly inside SolidWorks, when you go to the Contains tab or any kind of tab that has these different columns selected, uh, you can now sort these columns. So if you wanted to look at all of the documents that were together at Approved or under Editing, clicking the column is going to sort those documents. Or you wanted to look by uh, versions, found in locations, configuration names, and it'll sort numerically or alphabetically depending on uh, what makes sense for that column. So that's been added as a function as being able to sort through your data in the column sets. Um, and then the final one is the preview window. So these little preview thumbnails that appear when I hover over a document, those can be edited now to change size. So I can change those to a smaller image, a smaller uh, view, or I can make them much larger to get a better picture of what's going on uh, and what that document is. So right-clicking inside the table will give me access to this change thumbnail preview size so that I can switch those um, as well. Um, and then finally, I uh, want to talk a little bit about performance improvements, because that's also a, a big key feature of upgrading to newer version of PDM. And uh, these are some general performance improvements um, based on testing from uh, SolidWorks. So not necessarily guaranteed, but has been seen with some of their testing procedures. Um, Using the get tree in a very large vault has been significantly improved, up to 40% faster, um, faster file open times for the SolidWorks add-in. Um, that can be pretty significant for those of you that have trouble opening um, SolidWorks documents uh, using PDM. Um, launching the search in Windows Explorer can be up to five times faster. Um, clicking OK or Cancel on some of the dialogues can go from minutes to an instant response. Um, and the dedicated search tool uh, up to 20 times faster on some of the features like launching the search tool, menu display. Um, destroying folders can be up to 20 or 30 times faster depending on um, different variables, and then uh, file version update tool displaying broken references 12, 12 times faster. Um, and then some additional 
performance improvements, notifications, processing uh, 400 times faster. So basically how often and how effective is notifications uh, utility inside PDM, SolidWorks PDM, processing those notifications and sending them out. Um, so if you're experiencing delayed notifications, this might improve it significantly. Um, and then if you have a lot of configurations with your documents and you're trying to check it in, uh, market improvement there with being able to check those documents in. And <clears throat> if you've got a lot of actions, set variable actions, like you're updating a lot of custom properties in the change state dialog, uh, you can get a two or four times faster um, improvement there, hopefully. And then uh, API get state um, action is three times faster as well. So there's some significant performance improvements. This isn't all of them. These are some of the significant ones, and they're based on uh, test environments. So it's not necessarily going to <clears throat> be a one-to-one -one guarantee that these change, but there's definitely been some performance improvements to the software in general.